you're watching For the Win with me, Melissa Idris. Now I have on the show again, once again, Roshan Thiran, regular guest from Leadernomics. Leadernomics is a social enterprise that seeks to nurture development, uh, yeah, nurture potential development. and leadership development yeah, for, youth, in, yeah. for youth and also CEOs, yes? yes? That's right. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you back, Roshan. Good and to today back. we are in this beautiful common ground location at KL33. It is a beautiful space, but we also want to talk about a really interesting topic today about luck. Yes. So the nexus between leadership and luck and success, mm. right? So what do you think, Roshan? Do you believe in luck? Well, I, I used to think that, oh, I was very lucky. You know, I managed to get a scholarship to go to the US from a US university. I managed to get to work in GE. Right. But as I came back and I started interacting with folks, you know, Jim Collins and some of the researchers, they actually told me that actually you're not lucky because there's two types of luck. Luck okay. that you can influence uh -huh. and also luck that you cannot influence. And we always talk about luck as the first, as the second type, which is luck you cannot influence. Sure. You just get a lucky break and you know, luck it happens to be... Luck that you cannot influence would mean that your, where, who where, you're born to, exactly, your who parents, you're born to, the how you you're look. Born to, okay. Absolutely, your height. And sometimes, you know, in fact, some researchers say that your genetics can be changed also. Oh. Surprisingly, <laughs> there's a guy called Brice Lipton. But, but about, there's, there's some that say about 30 to 40% of luck is things that you cannot influence. You sure. cannot control those luck. Right. But about 60% of luck can be controlled or you can influence it. In what um, way? Yeah, so, so if you think about it, where sometimes many opportunities happen all along. Mm. I'll give you an example in Malaysia, Air Asia, you know, Air Asia was available for sale for a long time. I think, you know, at that time the asset was available, nobody wanted it. Right. But it just happened to be one guy that managed to say, hey, the planes, many are empty, you know, why are people, and yet many Malaysians don't fly. Right. How do we and, and there's an airline available for one dollar, you know. How do we connect these dots, right? And that ability to know these things is where luck always happens all the time. There's always opportunity. Okay. But you can influence it or you can control luck if you're able to know how to connect certain dots. See for me, Roshan, I can't separate in my mind what is luck and what is opportunity, right? Because you know, the Air Asia story could be someone recognizing, Tony Fernandez recognizing that there's opportunity yes. and then turning that into a success story. So how, for me, luck is when you absolutely, it is serendipitous, yes. there is, you know. It's a probability. It's a probability. Yes. You, it, you never would have guessed it would happen to someone like you and it did happen. Yeah. So that for me is luck. But do you, do you see it that way? Well, well there, there's, there's a great quote that says, luck, you know, is as much attitude as probability right as much attitude, attitude as, as probability, probability. so and that's, therein lies the difference right because if you have attitude right so something bad happens to you i give you an example many of our asian entrepreneurs mm. for example akio morita who started sony mm -hmm. or uh, sisoko honda who started honda right? right bad luck you know factory get blown up you know he has to go to the war you know honda honda uh. had so many bad things happen to him mm. but he somehow was able to still have the right attitude to pursue it and go on okay right and and this this is interesting because there are a lot of things that bad things happen right but the ability to look at it and say oh this happened maybe it's an opportunity for us to build something bigger maybe it's an opportunity and there's, there's therein lies attitude right yes because if you take so, so again another great form of research I'm, I'm reading now it's a book called redirect and it says it's, it's about story editing so what you believe right is really so what you believe is the stories you tell yourself so if you tell yourself ah, i'm brought from malaysia you know we are a small country what good can come out from malaysia you know okay. if this is a story you tell your actions will emulate your story so you start to act small you'll start when, when there's competition with somebody from a european or foreign country uh, us Ooh, I, I can't compete with these I'm, guys i'm from a small I'm from country, a small country. How who can am i, I compared to exactly. them oh. now if we believe that hey we are we are good, you know. I'm I'm clever. I'm, I have an ability. I'm I'm well educated. Now it's 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 that belief, right? That story we write about ourselves. Our then we our attitude becomes different, okay. and the beliefs translates into actions, and our actions translates to results. So there's there's a fine line so between are you attitude saying, and probability. Roshan, that lucky people tend to be more positive-minded, tend to be more confident in themselves, even though they may not necessarily feel that they, way. They may, right? But they also always never look at something as a dead rubber, you know, or, or, or a game over. Right. You know, it's always like, okay, so this happened. What does that mean in mm. the context of what I'm trying to build? And maybe this is good, 
you know, what good can come out of some incident? Now, when you reflect, right, and, and this is where, you know, luck, and there's a, and we'll talk a little bit about this called return of luck. Okay. Right? Because there's a guy called Jim Collins who did this study for over nine years. And he said that many of the most successful companies were not lucky. They had a very good return on luck. Like an ROI, yes, like a return ROL. on investment. So this is an ROL. Exactly. So does that mean that when you get a lucky break, you make the most of it? Absolutely. Oh. And, and that ability to do that, that return on luck, is what makes you successful or not. Okay, it's not whether we all get lucky breaks, Absolutely, right? Yes. Eventually. And, and, and the Tony Fernandez incident, right? He had a big ROL, right? Ooh. He was able to translate that into Air Asia as we know it today. Right. And many people have this, oh, I had this idea too. And look at this guy. He managed to, I mean, you've heard this story many times. Right? That's right. What, what happened? You had that idea. So, you, but that was not being able to, and we blame external forces. We blame, oh, I was in the wrong country. I, uh, you know, we had a place where there's no money and this and that. But somehow, a guy in Nigeria with the worst circumstance is able to translate that into something. Mm. But that's where the ROL comes in. Our ability to, to, to take that luck or whatever opportunity and make the most out of it. You know? Talk to me about processes because that also leads into making the most out of opportunity and luck, right? Yes. Because if you have good processes in place, you're well positioned to make the most of opportunities. Yes, and energy process drives attitude. So, and I'll explain like, if we have good processes where we are constantly reading, we are constantly aware of what's around us, you are likely to be more lucky, okay. right? And if you're able to actually have a structure to, to execute, a structure to scale, a structure to get things done. When a great idea comes, you're able to translate that idea into execution. So there is personal processes. You know, Ben Franklin was a great believer in, he called the 13 virtues, get up early, you know, reflect, uh, figure out what you made mistakes yesterday, improve yourself, okay. and those help you to be lucky. It's personal here. processes. And then there's also organizational processes, right? So how do I structure myself so that when ideas come in, it's not laid to the wayside. Because I bet you in many companies, a lot of great ideas are residing in many employees. Yes. But they never gets translated into, like I said, the return on luck is not strong. Mm. Right? So you have to build, processes actually helps you to scale your return on luck, to help you to translate some of these ideas into opportunities, into scalable uh, initiatives that can translate to profitability, that can translate to success stories. So, so that, 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 I mean, it sounds easy, but it's complex, right? That's because right. it starts with you as a person. Do you have personal productivity? Mm. Do you have personal initiatives that you do to make yourself better every day? Do you have a, a, a rigor in the way you conduct your life mm. so that you can see opportunities, so that you can be able to take hold of those opportunities and more importantly, to be able to take that opportunities to something useful in your life. Okay, uh, all right. So we're going to come back, Roshan, and look at your top 10 takeaways into how to increase your return on luck. On luck. That's coming up next on For The Win. Stay with us right here. Thanks for staying with us right here on For The Win. I'm Melissa Idris with Roshan Thiran from Leadernomics. Now, we're going to look at the Roshan's top 10 takeaways into, I guess, changing bad luck into good luck and really increasing the return on luck. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I always start with number one, be a believer. And, and, and that's important because many times we believe in scarcity. We believe that the pie is very small. When you believe in abundance, you start to think very differently. When you, be, when you have a growth mindset that there is opportunity in spite of. So many people say, hey, look, everything that's been invented has been invented. Right. right? And that's the starting point of no luck, right? Because you're not going to see things, right? Oh. So, so number one is really be a believer that there's always going to be opportunities. There's always going to be, and you're a lucky person. So you, you got to believe, believe that. that you're a lucky person believe and that. you will become lucky. Absolutely. Wow, that's the power of visualization and positive thinking. And, and we, we, it's, it's the story that I think piece again. If you believe you're lucky, you're going to edit stories in your mind to say that you're lucky. And somehow, lucky, it's like when you see a, a number plate on your, on your uh, you know, you remember this number plate, say your old car. Somehow when you drive, you always see the always same, see the number, same plate, number plate. Right? And, and that's because you're looking out for this. So if you believe you're lucky, you're always looking out for opportunity. You know? That's a and really the same thing plays out. great mindset to have, right? Yeah. You, so you know, be a believer. Wonderful. So number one, be a believer. Number, number two, be action biased. Mm. I, I think a lot of us are what we call weight biased. 
okay, let's explore. Let's understand the mechanics. Right. But sometimes opportunity comes by and you just have to say, let's just do it, right? I, I remember myself personally, a couple of years ago, uh, I had a fight with the editor of the star, uh, or the, the CEO of the star at the time. I was like, you know, you, I, can, I think I can do a much better job. And, and we had this bet. I was like, okay, if you let me do a print product, I think I'll do a great job at it. Okay. And, and, uh, and we had this bet and somehow it translated into a print product. And I went to my team and said, we're going to go into print publication and they all looked at me and said, what are we doing that for? I'm like, it's an opportunity, let's do it. Right. And, and, you, and then it translated into something huge, right? Over the years, right? But opportunities come by. You know, you want to be action buyers, mm. not let's wait and see, let's explore. Right? So this is like, um, analysis paralysis, right? Absolutely. When you're so busy looking at what can go wrong that and you don't actually take action. So inaction is essentially... It's essential. In ex essentially, you, there's an opportunity, you're going to lose that's it. That's missed. Right, right? absolutely. I, I think the third thing is make the most of unplanned events. I think I cannot tell you how many times, right? And, and this is interesting. We are learning, we're teaching people to say no. Learn to say no, right? Uh -huh. But I'm saying learn to say yes, right? Because sometimes you have somebody come in and say, you know, let's talk about, you know, I got this guy, and you really don't see any, nothing that you can get from this person. Sure, it's, but a, sometimes, it's a meeting that you didn't plan, that it just happened. Right, and, and you maybe don't want it, but sometimes that meeting translates to something else. Sometimes, a lot of times, I'm too tired, I really don't want to go to this networking session. But when you go there, you meet somebody and like, oh, I can open up something in India thanks to this connection that right, I have made. Right? Right. But unplanned events make the most out of it. Sometimes they are the most, they're gold mines that, that really are waiting for someone to mine. You know, okay, to wonderful. So, so that's number three. Make the most of unplanned events. Okay. Right. Number four is be aware. And, hmm? and, and be aware means that little things matter. When, when you see the world, sometimes, you know, so I, I've got a lot of folks that travel. Like we went to, you know, I took my team to India recently. And, you know, I was like, did you see that? Did you see that? And they were like, what? <laughs> Just like, same as Malaysia. But look, this is very different, right? And, and when we start looking it deeper and deeper, we start to realize, wow. And then when an opportunity comes, we're able to see and relate I the see. connections that we see outside with the opportunities that actually come about. Okay, right? so, so being present, being really aware of your surroundings, of take, paying attention to the details, that will help you identify opportunities and make the most yeah. of it. And Steve Jobs says it best, you know, he says like, you will not know the dots to connect until after. So he said, look, I went for this class, <laughs> typography and design, and I have no idea why it was important, but you know, when we started designing the Mac, I realized that class was so important, mm. you see. The dots only connect at the end, not at the start. You know? That's right. And okay. so that's why awareness is really, really, awareness of everything, right? And, and sometimes, you know, you must understand technology, finance, and, 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 and psychology to be a good HR person, not just understanding HR processes, right? Mm. For example. That's Likewise, true. a technology person needs to understand the user experience and so on. So it's not just one thing, it's, it's about everything. So be mm. aware, right? Perfect. Now, the next one is, I, I said this, in, in, but really don't be afraid to say yes. In, in, in any form, right? Don't be afraid to say yes. So because not just to unplanned events, yes, but, but don't be just afraid say, to say yes, yes in general. Yeah. Sometimes we are, and, and sometimes we're really tired, right? So, so plan your organization. This is where your processes come in, right? Mm. Be a, be, have a person that's like me. You know, I say yes to everything. And then I've got another person, my co-founder, who say no to everything, right? <laughs> and, and, and our job is to balance each other. But have somebody in your organization that's just looking out and saying that I'm ready to try something new, to okay. experiment, and, and so on and so forth. I'll not berate this point because we, we talked about this. My, my sixth point is this, never eat alone. Now, I think this is very interesting because there's a, there's a book uh, written by this guy, I forget his name, but he wrote this book, Never Eat Alone. And when I read it, I saw the title, I was like, okay, I need to read this. But he makes some very interesting points. What does that mean, never eat alone? That, you know, the best guys who come up with the great ideas, you know, folks like Tony, and you see a lot of these big CEOs, they don't sit there. I mean, there's a time for you to be alone, but most of the time, is for you to join somebody, you know, even if it's, you know, even in your office, right? And you hate going to meet all your employees, right? But you go out there, when you talk to somebody, you get an insight that it's unplanned. Right. And you find an idea that, wow, this is what my four men on the ground is saying. This is what, so when, when, when you have a chance, right? Never eat alone. Like always because join somebody. food is bonding, isn't Absolutely. it? It bonds us, especially here in Malaysia. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you know, it's everywhere, right? When you have a sharing a sandwich, even in the US, right? You know, things come out right. Right? because it's, it's easy. I can just express myself. And that's where luck comes in because a lot of luck is uncovering of opportunity, right? And you will not know and you will not be aware if you don't have, you know, if you eat alone, right? Because when you eat alone, it's just you and well, your thoughts, you right? know, you're definitely right about me time, but you can have me time sometime else, you know, find, find you know, carve a little space out in your day for me time. But meals, 
that would be a yes. perfect opportunity to share with it's, someone. It's also a chance to build your social network, right? Mm. Because it's it's we we under undermine you know the ability to have physical sh social networks. Right. You know, we think about the digital. You say you have five thousand friends on Facebook, or yeah, whatever LinkedIn, the number or of fifty thousand <laughs> friends. Are. But it's not the same as having that shared meal together. We forget that sometimes. Understanding, yeah, we yeah, do. yeah, because that, there's huge opportunity um, that that comes that way. Now, my, my next point, number seven, is overcome self-sabotage. I, I think sometimes um, our greatest enemy is ourselves. We beat ourselves up. Mm. We, 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 we fail to see something and then we say, hey, you know, how could I miss that, right? right. And, and this then deters us to try harder, to take risk. You, you've got to keep taking risks because it's always, you remember, ideas that come to fruition, it's always risky proposition. Sure. It's never clean. It's never easy. It's always... It's always pushing you out of the comfort zone a little bit, absolutely, challenging you absolutely. that much, right? And, and we, we tend to self-sabotage a lot. We, we tend to push ourselves harder. We tend to blame ourselves harder. We tend to sometimes, you know, think, okay, this is the way. I'm sure this is how I was trained. And I know this is the way. Mm. And all my experience tells me this is the way. Mm. But the world has changed. Context has changed. Mm. And sometimes we self-sabotage by following our steadfast, you know, we, we talked about letting go. Letting right? go last week. Part, of it, right. is, part of it is that So self-sabotage right? is, you know, we often don't realise we do that, but it really undermines our ability to recognise luck when yes, it comes knocking. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Uh, number eight is about curiosity. And I, I think we under, undermine this a lot. We, we put in processes in companies to actually dispel, you know, we have this idea box, uh -huh. but it's just one of Does those things Does anyone read it really? Right, and, <laughs> and curiosity is about, hey, why? Why is it working this way? Mm. Why did this video, I mean, I, I asked this question to my employees, companies, why is this video of a guy dancing, you know, the guy who went around dancing around the world and had like 10 why million, is that viral? 20, yeah, what, what this is a stupid dance, right? But asking why, right? right. That, that, that childlike curiosity, mm. right? Because then you say, hey, you know what? It's about humanity. It's not about the stupid dance. It's about, so when you start to answer the whys, you start to realize that, ooh, so if I make things that are humane or, or has oh, humanity or, or that human spirit, that, that ability to, to, to showcase, you know, I can be stupid and I dance stupidly, but I have this human spirit. Right. Wow, that makes good viral copy, you know, and so on and so forth. So you, you get, and it's like, wait, how do I make our stuff here? What, 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 how can I make my content more engaging? Better, more, yeah. more, more elements of humanity, right? For but sure. that curiosity, that childlike, I want to know why. I want to know why. I want to know why is it that these Indians do it this way? Why do the Chinese do it this way? Why do these Americans do it this way? You know, mm. I was very curious about this left side, drive side, drive a couple oh, of years driving. ago. I, I need to figure it out, you know, and then simple, right? The British Commonwealth had it and yeah. the Americans, actually it came from the buggies. Why is it different, right? Because, yeah, but when you try to answer this question, you learn a lot and you're like, wow, this is, in it's interesting. And you never know, like Steve Jobs, right? Where you'll be able to connect the dots. Yes, uh, all right. Future. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Always ask why. Be Always curious. ask why and be curious. Have that childlike. Now, the, the next one is interesting because I think if you help others, right? They will come and help you. Oh. And, and Idris Chala, many years ago, when I was speaking to him, he, he told me this, he said, you know, he believes luck is divine intervention. He says, if you do good, good will be done to you. And this is his belief, right? And, and I sort of believe it, you know, when, when you do good, right, when you help others, as time goes on, right, they will conspire to help you, right? The world will conspire to help you when you help the world, right? Okay. And so, you know, even in our team, I said, look, it's about giving. You give, it doesn't matter, right? At some point in time, people will give. And usually, they give ideas, they give you opportunities, they give you luck, right? Luck that you don't seek. Okay. And, and I've seen that many times, like, I don't go around seeking it, but the government, you know, comes and says, hey, we're going to approve some of these things because it's great, the stuff that you're doing. Okay, now, why? We've been giving free education and you get luck in return. Right. And to me, there's a lot of merit in this. The more good you do, and it's not just about signing checks, right? It's really about having the heart to really want to do good, mm. to helping somebody. And, and I, I don't know if you know the science behind it. There's actually serotonin that is released when say, say you do example, something good, you feel good? Yeah. Say, say you see somebody being helped. You feel good even though you're watching that incident. It's like watching a good movie and like, oh, I feel so good. Mm -hmm. You have that good, feel good feeling. Mm -hmm. That's chemicals like serotonin and oxytocin that come out. Because when somebody helps, there's pride. Wow, this person helped. Even I though it's good. someone else. Even though it's someone else. And that person is feeling good. 
the person who helped is feeling good, and the person who's being helped is feeling good. So it's go. it's it, it and and when you feel good, right, you're likely to be more lucky. So help others, and in the process, you will be you increase your return on luck. Might that, that's, be lucky that's all. in return. There you go. Well, thank you so much, Roshan. And, and my last one. Oh, you have another one. The, the, the number ten. Number is, ten. You know, I, I think this is, I mean, again, depends on whether you, you, you're a believer in God, but I feel that if you pray more and wow. if you talk to the divine, <laughs> I think ultimately luck, again, this is from Idris, uh, you, you, you enhance, because again, it's, it's the stories you tell yourself. Right. So those, those are really my top 10. Uh, always do good. I think the, the good, I, 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 I think we undermine that Always ability to do, do good. good, right? And it will come back to you. Well, thank you so much for sharing your top 10 takeaways on how to increase your luck, Roshan. Now, Roshan will be back with us same time next week on For The Win. I'm Melissa Idris, signing off. <laughs>